There are a lot of games that involve time travel. Some are simple, some are overly complicated. Why don't we go with one that is simple, but with a crazy story and has a classic pixel look to it. Come and join me as I review Super Time Force Ultra on PC. Super Time Force was first released on May 14, 2014 for the 360 and Xbox One. The game was developed by Capybara Games, who have developed the games Might and Magic Clash of Heroes, OK Go Let's Play Heroes, and helped in developing the DLC for Don't Starve Shipwrecked. I didn't really find anything about the development for the game, but on their website section for the game, they have a pretty good line that describes what the game is to a T. Super Time Force isn't what would happen if Braid and Contra had a baby. Super Time Force is what would happen if Braid and Contra had a party. Honestly, that pretty much exactly describes Super Time Force. Similar gameplay to Contra with the time travel mechanic of Braid. I felt like I was going to have a bit of a stubborn time to describe what the game is, but those two lines perfectly summarize what the game is about. The story begins around the 1980 insert number here, where we see a Dr. Repitsky has found out how to travel through time. Suddenly robots begin attacking the city. We then meet a future Commander Repitsky show up and announce that him and his team will deal with the threat. Every stage has an objective that you need to complete, and usually they are very strange. One has you needing to go to the future to get the newest update to watch a cat video, while another is bringing the holy chalice to save a medieval restaurant. Whenever you start a level, with painful results, you are allowed to choose any available characters you have. Each character has a normal attack and a charged attack, and each one varies. Jean, one of the starting characters, has a normal rifle and when charged has a spread machine gun. While Amy, another of the starter characters, has a rifle that can ricochet off terrain or, if charged, can pierce through terrain. There are a lot of characters that you can find on the way to the end of these uh, stages. Now, once you've chosen your character, your goal is to get to the end and proceed to the next stage. You have a ton of blown bots, the robots that are constantly on you during these stages, and whoever is there during that time period. So you have plenty of opposition in your way. Unfortunately, each character is also a one-hit wonder. Thankfully, you have time travel, so you can go back and stop whatever killed you. And you can choose another character too. Once you're back in, that previous character is a ghost that is running your previous run. If you kill whatever killed that previous character, that character will stop where they died. You can pick them up and you can upgrade your character to a 2 hit wonder. Not only letting them take an extra hit, but being able to use the charge attack of the previous character along with their own. You can only do this a limited number of times, but you can pick up shards that give you an extra use for your time travel shenanigans. There is also another pickup that only shows up after time traveling. If you either pick this up or shoot it, everything slows down and allows you to do more actions during that effect. And every time you go back to that point, you will see that character just blast through whatever they did. Fortunately and unfortunately, that pickup can be used again, so long as you get to it before the last character gets to it, where it will pick it up and just run its course. At the very end of each stage, there is a single specific pickup. Getting this shows a timer, which more than likely is going to be in the negatives. Time travel back to the very beginning of the stage will start a time trial. Completing this gives you an award for the stage and completing all these also unlocks you a new character. These things are also brutal. I only finished one and I had less than a second when I got to the end. Once you complete the level, the game replays everything in one take. 
It's hilarious to watch all your attempts happen at the same time, and just seeing the chaos that you commit during these stages is just beautiful. The music for the game is all chiptune. Fits very well with the 8-bit aesthetic the game went with. Unfortunately, I couldn't really talk about the music when I was writing the script because of all the explosions that were happening during the game. So thankfully, I picked up the soundtrack when I got the game and listened to all 1 hour and 48 minutes of it. It's very good. Some of it has a bounce to it and some of it was actually relaxing to listen to. The music was done by an artist calling themselves 6955 and either I couldn't find anything else or this was the last thing they worked on. Like I mentioned, the game has an 8-bit style which reminds me of the old NES games. The characters are very well detailed with this style, complete with shading, and the stages and backgrounds honestly make me want to use some of them as wallpaper backgrounds. Overall, do I recommend it? Sure. The game isn't too long. In fact, I actually expected the final stage to be similar to the Wily Fortresses from Mega Man. Thankfully, it follows the same format the other levels did, just harder and honestly felt like a good challenge. There is also a challenge mode in the game where you solve puzzles with limited tries and characters. And completing the game also unlocks Super Hardcore mode, where there is permadeath and the use of ultra characters. The game is available on a lot of consoles and on PC. Super Time Force Ultra goes for $15 on Steam and PS4. While Super Time Force on Xbox is also $15, I would actually recommend the Ultra version because it comes with extra unique characters and unfortunately it doesn't seem like it's available on the Xbox. If you pick up any version, either way, you can always enjoy running and gunning and rewinding and doing it all over again.